the north and the south forks of the beautiful St. Lucie River in Martin and St. Lucie counties, Florida, abound with wildlife. The North Fork is a game sanctuary. The conservation laws are respected in the South Fork. One spring, we started up the North Branch from Bert Pruitt's camp, armed with binoculars and a movie camera to see what we could capture of this life existing on or near the waters of the St. Lucie. Nothing changes in the upper river but the wind and the tide. The scenery seems just as it was many years ago with its air plants, wild orchids on the trees. Lilies reflected in the dark waters, fringed with fallen trunks. Hyacinths and muddy banks where alligators like to sun themselves. Here's a big fellow. In a jiffy, he goes for the water. Here's another one about eight feet long. This Florida great blue heron, or Ward's heron, is seen throughout the state. Nests in cypress trees, eats frogs, fish, small mammals and reptiles. Length to 52 inches, wing spread to 82 inches. The black markings on the side of his head identify it. In a narrow creek with ferns and small mangroves, arching the water lies a gator watching for a meal or sunning himself. Snakes are said to be a favorite dish. We discover a hawk's nest back from the river and investigate. A red-shouldered hawk is perched on a nearby limb, probably young in the nest, as the bird, while disturbed, lingers around. Let us look for some more interesting animals. This sandhill crane, sometimes called the Florida hoopa, is related to the nearly extinct hooping crane, which is a pure white bird with the same red face markings. The nests are generally in reeds near marshy places, are about a foot high. Two or three eggs are laid. This armored creature is a Florida armadillo. If you find holes in your lawn some morning, maybe it's he who has been digging for worms or insects. A little Florida bear cub has strayed while his mother may be looking for food. Florida has quite a bear population. Uh oh, here she is. When walking in the country anywhere, watch out for the rattlesnake. Listen for its rattle. Avoid him when coiled. His strike is fast and deadly. The vibrating tail with rattles is his warning. In slow motion, you see the action of the fang jaws. As we return toward the river, we run into this huge land crab. One of its claws is missing. He looks furious enough to have been fighting. The remaining claw has a terrific grip. The eyes and mouth 
are as any other watercraft. Did you know this crab is also at home in the water? We return downstream still hunting for Lulubel, a playmate of Bert's at mealtime. Lulubel calls Bert. After much grunting and sign language, by Bert, Lulu slides into the water and approaches the boat, rather cautiously, however. The fish at the end of a stick doesn't seem to interest her. She does take a smell, but continues to move in slow circles around us. Bert now tries a jack on his fastidious bell of the river. takes it and starts for the other bank to swallow it. She finally swims away underwater when we follow her. Coming down the North Fork and starting up the South, we see pelicans feeding near the junction. Note the black and gray markings and white heads of the males. The females are brownish. See the big bills and pouches in action. As the St. Lucie's fork narrows, a huge school of mullet is on hand to show off before visitors. They are fed with bread from the hand. Around 20 million pounds of mullet yearly are taken in nets as a food fish in Florida. They provide feed for other large fish and make good bait for sport fishermen. The mullet are protected by a closed season. They feed in the mud on microscopic organisms and while they breed mostly in salt water, they do run up the streams into freshwater lakes. Size range from fingerlings to about four pounds. Sally claims acquaintance with most of the alligators of the river. So, under her guidance, we start after them. In the spring, gators seem to congregate along the river, then go back into the bayous and swamps to mate, lay eggs and rear young. A gator on a log. The front legs and feet are much smaller than the hind legs upon which they can rear themselves up. A cormorant gets off the water after walking on it a ways. Another great blue heron flaps along ahead of us. As we go upstream, the alligators seem more plentiful. We may run into a gathering of them. A little blue heron in its white phase lingers and we land. In a clearing, two flowered a deer, a doe and a buck, are feeding, but they do not linger. As we start back to the river, 
A Florida panther flashes silently by, trailing perhaps the deer. In this pool, we spot at least three really large alligators gathering for the mating season. Are we to expect trouble? If there's a nest nearby, a side swipe from the tail or jaw of one of these 14 footers would be serious. Keep moving. At night, you often hear the grunting and bellowing of these monsters. The spring sun has warmed their hides. They are active and full of fight, though not as numerous as in the centuries gone by. Conservation has kept some alive for you to see. I think you are following me, says the heron. Just going your way, mister. That's all. The alligators are provided with a pinkish filament which covers their eyes underwater only so that they may have perfect vision. The ears, slits behind the eyes, are very sensitive and the sense of smell is acute. The St. Lucie and many other beautiful rivers in Florida offer everyone a chance to observe and enjoy many wonders of nature near home. As you have seen, conservation is well worthwhile. <laughs>